At present, there are three main types of energy available for your car. Gasoline, of course, including diesel, batteries, and hydrogen. And there are a small number of natural gas-powered buses as well. We hear talk about which of these energy sources is the best for the environment and which is the most efficient to drive with. In this episode, we will look into this matter in more depth and determine which source is, in fact, the best. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. This episode took me down a bit of a research rabbit hole, so I'm going to link a whole bunch of scientific studies in the description, just in case you want to look deeper yourself. By percent adoption, gasoline and diesel is far and away the largest energy source available for powering your car and most other forms of overland transportation. Even diesel electric trains used to haul goods use diesel fuel to generate electricity. Next is batteries, with battery electric vehicles growing rapidly and set to grow even further over the next few years. And then there is hydrogen. While hydrogen fuel cells have been around since 1838, wow, <laughs> they were invented by Robert Grove. And these cells were refined to be extremely useful power sources during the Apollo missions in the 1960s. Hydrogen as an automotive fuel source has lagged far behind. While over a billion gas cars have been sold and well into the millions of BEVs, hydrogen cars have only totaled about 7,500 cars ever sold by the end of 2019. And finally, as a side note, like I said, some city buses and other experimental vehicles do use natural gas. I won't really explore natural gas as a fuel source here, but it is available and it's actually cleaner environmentally than gasoline is. Let's first discuss the convenience factor for each of these power sources at the moment, of course. Gasoline, of course, gas and diesel are currently extremely easy to get. You pull up to any gas station and you can fill up to a range of 300 plus miles in under five minutes. Of course, this could change in the future, but right now, for convenience, most people would choose gasoline. And of course, due to the convenience and the rapid fill-up time, range is really never an issue with a gas car. Batteries. In many ways, BEVs are more convenient than gas if you own a house. <laughs> so if you can park in a driveway or a garage with a power source, you can simply plug in your car each evening and never really have to go to the gas station again. But if you are traveling, you have to plan your trip much more carefully to get to a charging station. And it takes at least 20 minutes up to maybe an hour to charge up, which is by no means convenient. And of course, if you live in an apartment or a condo, electric charging suddenly becomes an issue. This will likely get easier or better over time, but it really holds back BEV adoption in large cities right now. And by the way, I'm going to do an episode on just that topic soon. So range is clearly an issue, and for city dwellers, basic charging is also an issue for batteries. But for more suburban consumers who can easily charge their car at home, a BEV is far more convenient for daily driving than is a gas car. And hydrogen. This is definitely the least convenient of the power sources. There are very few stations to start with. There are in fact fewer than 50 stations in the United States at this time, including a whopping zero in Georgia. So it's not even a possibility for me if I wanted to drive a hydrogen car. Plans are in place to build up to about a thousand in the US by 2030, but still that's only gonna be a thousand and think about how many gas stations there are. You can't really travel cross country in the United States with hydrogen, I guess unless you took a really very scenic route and plan your trip just exactly to get to the next station. And even then, the distances would make it kind of iffy whether you could actually do it. You can, of course, fill up hydrogen much faster than a BEV, more like gasoline times. On the convenience front, hydrogen can also be quite dangerous as well. It's stored under high pressure and is the most flammable element. So a great deal of metal or other high-tech materials needs to go into the tanks, which is weight and money. To make hydrogen as convenient as gasoline, you'd have to remake the entire gasoline grid over again. You'd have to have new creation sites, new transportation, and new fuel stations. Of course, it's possible to use local creation, but this makes hydrogen even less efficient in terms of creation. Speaking of, let's discuss efficiency in just a moment. But first, if you enjoy this video, definitely make sure you like it so other people can find it, because that's how YouTube works. Of course, thank you to my patrons on Patreon. You guys are amazing. <laughs> I'd like to do a new patron shout out to Furkat Rakimov, and I hope I got that anywhere close to correct, Hilton Krev, Nick Surinder B, and Mick Farrell. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate your support. And a quick shout out to Zenly Music, who did the intro and conclusion for me. He's amazing, so you should definitely check him out. And of course, if you're in the market for a new Tesla, check out our referral link below. If you purchase a Tesla, we get a thousand free supercharger miles and so do you, so that's awesome. 
Now let's look at the efficiency of each power source. I'm not interested here in the miles per gallon ratings or you know the EPA stuff, but I want wheel to well efficiency. In other words, what percentage of the energy used to create, transport, and drive your car actually gets to your wheels to actually make it move. This is really the critical factor when it comes to how useful and sustainable these power sources are. So let's start with gasoline. You have to drill the oil from sometimes very inhospitable places. You have to transport that oil to a refinery. You have to refine the oil into diesel or gas. You have to then transport that gasoline to fuel stations. Then you have to put the fuel in your car. Then you have to burn said fuel, creating a lot of waste heat. And then you get power to your wheels. Amazingly enough, given all these crazy steps, gas engines are still on the order of 25% efficient, which is pretty amazing. Yes, I know that's not very efficient, but look at what has to happen to get that power to your wheels. It's kind of crazy. Batteries. We have to produce the electricity. How this done, of course, is highly variable. Everything from coal and natural gas that has to be mined and burned, to nuclear that still has to be mined and refined, to hydroelectric, water generated, to solar, to wind, to even geothermal. After creation, the electricity has to be transported via an electrical grid, which has losses in the form of heat given off by the power lines, plus up and down transforming voltages, etc., etc., unless you use solar at your home. And then you can just transfer the power to your car. Of course, the electricity is used to charge your batteries, which involves an AC to DC loss plus loss to heat when charging the batteries. Batteries then get converted back to AC, which is really wasteful, <laughs> and then they directly drive the car wheels. Even given all of these steps, battery electric vehicles are 85% plus efficient from well to wheel, which is, you know, really pretty amazing. And, and by the way, as a side note, I can do an episode on what work is and how all these power sources play with entropy to create power. Just let me know in the comments if you'd be interested. And then there's hydrogen. Hydrogen needs at least electricity to be created. In electrolysis, one takes electricity from someplace, which is the same as batteries. Then by placing electrodes in a tank of water and running electricity through them, you separate hydrogen and oxygen and you collect it. Or you can alternatively use natural gas reforming to make the hydrogen. Natural gas reforming is far more efficient as a process than electrolysis, but the natural gas has to be mined and then heated, which is more energy to make the hydrogen. Hydrogen then has to be pressurized to be transported and stored in cars. As hydrogen is an extremely undense element, it has to be pressurized a lot to fit into a reasonable space. Then the hydrogen has to be transported via pipelines or truck, or it could be created locally using solar, but this is very inefficient due to the small scales involved. Then it gets put in your car, then it gets run through a fuel cell using environmental oxygen to create electricity, and then it powers the wheels via motors very similar to those used in BEVs. In general, this process is only about 17% efficient well to wheel. And this inefficiency is exactly why Elon Musk says hydrogen fuel cells are fool cells. The entire wheel to well process is far, far less efficient than for batteries. And electricity grids already exist, but you would have to recreate the entire oil to gas grid to make hydrogen convenient. And this would still not solve the efficiency issue. Of course, hydrogen and batteries can and will be made more efficient. They are on a steep decline curve right now. But gas is pretty well maxed out. It's only going to get harder to get oil out of the ground. So efficiency can really only go down or at best stay the same. Plus, hydrogen and batteries can be powered only via green or renewable energy. Which brings us to our last topic, the environmental impact of each of these energy sources. I'm not going to discuss the car itself, in other words, mining, manufacturing, transportation, etc. Just the power source, in other words, just the gasoline, just the batteries, and just the hydrogen. Gas cars are far more environmentally damaging locally. What comes out of the tailpipe is terrible, even with mitigation like catalytic converters thrown in. Just to produce gas pumps around 1.4 to 2.8 kilos or 3 to 6 pounds of CO2 and other gases like methane into the air per pound of gasoline. So oil and gas is simply awful for our environment. No way around that. Batteries and hydrogen. Right now it takes anywhere from 0 kilograms of CO2 with fully renewable energy, disregarding the CO2 cost to build them of course, up to nearly one kilogram or 2.2 pounds of CO2 using the dirtiest power source, coal. Even with coal, however, this is better as long as the efficiency of the use is good. So of course, producing hydrogen is pretty much the same as batteries for hydrolysis, but it's much worse environmentally when you have to burn and heat natural gas to create hydrogen that way. And what about the future? Gas first. 
Gas can at best remain the same environmentally and will likely get worse and worse due to having to dig deeper and more remotely to get more of it. Batteries. As the grid goes greener, so CO2 and other gas emissions are reduced. Thus, the environmental cost of BEVs is going to go down pretty steeply as countries convert most of their energy to renewable sources. And hydrogen. If cheap renewable electricity gets more available, hydrogen can be generated by electrolysis in a more environmentally friendly manner. Natural gas, however, is going to remain a dirty process. So hydrogen and batteries both have a way forward to get cleaner environmentally over time, while gas is likely to get worse over time. Let's conclude by looking at wheel-to-well efficiency again. Battery power is so much more efficient that even if all of these power sources produce the same amount of CO2 and other gases to get to your car, a battery-powered car itself is so much more efficient that it really makes no sense for most cases to use the other two power sources at all. While of course there will always be specialized uses for gasoline, and we actually need to mine oil for other petroleum products of course, batteries are simply the most efficient and thus cost and environmentally friendly power source we have today. Hydrogen could get there, but really only if electricity becomes nearly infinite, in other words like fusion reactors, 20 years from now. <laughs> In the meantime, hydrogen is too inconvenient and too inefficient to be a reasonable power source for transportation. Take heed, Toyota and Nikola. <laughs> hydrogen is not the way forward for the foreseeable future. Batteries are. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it informative and helpful. If you did, definitely make sure you like it and definitely subscribe for more of these. Also, make sure you ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.